If you guys want to learn how to make this miniature slot machine, watch the full video for details. You can also download the template off of my website. Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how you can make a miniature slot machine for your um, wine cellar. The first thing you're going to need to do is go on my website and print out the template. On the template you will see a sketch of the pieces that you would need with the measurements and then you will also find the graphics. Okay, so these will be the side panels. This can be the top or the front decoration. It's up to you. And then you have the machine art over here. This is for the spinner and then you will have an optional page with different size spinners that you can use for different size dolls. Then there are two red pages that you can use in case you don't want to paint it. You can just print them out and Mod Podge them on. Okay, so what I've done is I've cut out the graphic. I'm going to flip it upside down and I'm going to apply some Mod Podge on the back side of it. You just want to put Mod Podge right along the back side. Once you have Mod Podge, then you're going to take your wooden dowel and you're going to make sure you line it up with at least one of the numbers directly in the center. Then you want to fold it up and then roll it. Now, if you use a bigger dowel, it will wrap completely around and you'll be able to see all of the numbers. I'm using a smaller dowel because that's what I had. So now I need to remove the excess off of there. There's two ways. You can let it dry, which you do want to let it dry before you do it. And you can cut it with a knife so it's even and you don't see an edge. Or you can take scissors and cut it with that. Alright, once you have it on there, then you want to go ahead and Mod Podge the exterior of it. The best way to do that is to get yourself some stick pens that you can put in the side, much like you're eating an ear of corn and then Mod Podge it and spin it as you do it. If you don't have stick pens, you can use a scrap piece of wire or a toothpick. Okay, another option you can use, if you do not have access to Mod Podge, you can use clear packing tape and put that on there before you apply it to your dowel. Okay, so now you have all your parts. I went ahead and put an X on all of my pieces that I want facing inside so I don't confuse them. And now that I have them there, I'm going to go ahead and Mod Podge my decals on the sides. So you want to go ahead and cut out each of these rectangles. Okay, so now you want to go ahead and Mod Podge the exterior of your wood. The first time you're going over, you're going to want to put it on a little thick and then spread it out. it will absorb into the wood. Just don't leave any lines like that. You want to make sure it's nice and thin. Okay, after that then you want to go ahead and apply it to your decal by laying it flat. Okay, so once you have them on there you can take a soft cloth and just rub any of the air bubbles that may have gotten on it off and then you want to let it dry completely before you go and do the next step. Okay, so now you want to take the part that says joystick and then you want to take the smaller one, it looks like this, and you want to do the same exact thing and apply it to there to where it's in the center. Alright, so once you have that on there, then you want to cut the corners downward. Okay, now remove the excess from the sides. And when you fold it over, it should look kind of like that. Alright, now if this is dry, then you can go ahead and 
remove it by taking your box knife very gently going down. If you have to take multiple passes, it's easier to take multiple passes than to rip it. You want to do that throughout the entire side piece and then repeat the process for the other side piece. This side should look something like that. Okay, so now you want to take this and you want to mod podge it on to this section. All right, so when you're doing this one, you want the bevel facing on an angle going downward toward the front. Then you're going to apply the clip art. This is machine art. Put it as even as you can with the sevens. You will have a very limited window to adjust it because it will absorb into the paper rather quickly. Then you want to let that dry and you move on to the next part. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to take your back. If you want to apply the strip of red that is on the extra printed paper, you can. Or you can just apply the glue right along the edge of this and attach it to the sides. Right. Once you have that like that with glue on both sides of that, then you are going to attach the sides to it just like this. Make sure that you have them even at the bottom and even at the top. At this point, you want to take your bottom piece that you have marked bottom and you want to put glue on three sides. slide it right in the middle of that and again make sure it is even. You can flip it upright if you're really careful and then you can just squeeze it together like that. At this point I would normally put masking tape on it and let it hold till it dries however you can't because you have paper on the side of it and the masking tape will rip the paper so don't use masking tape. You'll just have to kind of hold it until it sets or leave it sit and then try to keep it together. And try not to squeeze it like I just did. Level it back up. Square it up. And then let that dry. If you would like and you feel more secure, you can run a bead of glue up along the inside and right there and right along there. That'll help hold it in place until you get it completely done. All right, while that dries, I'm gonna go ahead and use the red sheet of paper that I have on there and I had it printed out and I'm gonna Mod Podge it and I'm gonna put all of my pieces on here. I'm gonna start with the bottom and work my way up. This is the bottom. This is the part that needs to be facing in, so I need to put Mod Podge on that side. All right, then I'm gonna do the same thing. To the next piece. Next piece. Okay. 
I'm going to flip that over while I still can and I'm going to rub out all of the bubbles and press it into the wood so it's nice and snug. You want to let this dry thoroughly before you cut it out. When you cut it out, flip it upside down to where you see the white side and use the box knife or the cutter to cut it. All right, so once it's dry, you want to take the bottom part marked one and you want to apply some glue on the sides of it. Then on the bottom and then along the top. That piece you're going to apply right in here and it's going to go on a slight angle. Remove any excess glue. And what we did is we pre-marked ours and you can do the same by just using the drawing. Right now, you want to take the next one and you're going to put that in there on an angle going this way. So, you're going to need glue on the bottom of that. Inside and the top. So you want to pull that up front just like that. And now you want to do the joystick. The joystick, you're going to apply some glue right along here, which it's not really a joystick. It's only a joystick if you use it for a video game. And then along both sides. You don't need it on the front of there. I don't know what I was thinking. You just need it on the sides. That was the purpose of wrapping that around. All right, so then you want to let that dry so it stops moving on you. Okay, so for the next part, you want to bevel that edge up there, and this piece here is one piece on the template. I left it one piece so you could cut it to the size that you wanted to use your dowel, because you can use your dowel at um, different sizes. So you want to go ahead and cut it, and like I said, all of this piece here is one piece. Just cut it to fit your dowel with about an inch underneath. and then three quarters of an inch on top or vice versa, whichever way you wanna do it based on the dowel that you chose to use. Now, at this point, you'll need to apply your little um, game bar. So you're gonna to have to measure the center of the dowel, mark it in there, and then you're also gonna to have to poke a hole in each side. Okay, so for this I'm just using a regular little nail and I've already pre-poked a hole inside of my thing. Okay, so once I get it in there, I want to find the center of the hole and I just want to lightly tap that in. 
Okay, I'm not going to tap it all the way in in case I need to adjust it at this point while I get the other side. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. And I'll be right back. Okay, so once you have that on an angle and that straight, you're going to have to mess with it a little bit to get it even. But once you have it there, then you're going to apply your piece to the top. And you may have to adjust this to size depending on how far down you have your bar. All right, so you're going to do the glue on three sides of this and then fit it in here. You may have to sand it down depending on how you cut it, if you cut it accurate or not, for the size dowel that you have. Once you fit it in there, then you want to attach the top. Make sure it's even with the top. And then glue the top to it. Apply the glue all the way around it. Okay, so at this point, you want to take the pot spot, or I oh, can't even talk, the logo that says Lucky 7 or Slot 7 and leave the white there. You want to cut it and slide the white right down in there. That way the white acts as part of the wheel. And then you want to press the rest of it on there. Let it dry and then Mod Podge the entire thing after you paint all your edges red. Okay, now I've painted all of the edges red and the sides where the trim was and now I'm going to Mod Podge it with gloss. Okay, so while I'm waiting on that to dry, I went ahead and made a little handle out of a piece of copper wire. I just bent it a couple different ways and then that'll go right on there to pretend as if it's a handle that you can use. Okay, just so you know, Mod Podge goes on looking like it's white, but it does dry clear. But you don't want to get globs either. Okay, so I drilled a hole there and then now I'm gonna take my wire and I'm gonna bend it down in there to use the handle. And then the wheel will rotate, but you have to do it by hand. Uh -huh. 